Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Pork here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Women's boxing, where is it heading? Uh, everybody's gonna say Porky, you was right. So, alright. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big P here. You know, don't you? You know. Right, straight into action, no messing about. Fight Camp, part two. What did we all think to it? I thought main event were a 10 out of 10. So, full credit to both teams and to the people that put that together. But let's just back on up a little bit. Let's just back on up. Let's put it in reverse. Let's reverse up and have a little uh, think about what's been said and what's gone on. Eddie Hearn and I quote and Mr Bean, Adam Smith, Bean said and Johnny Nelson and all the rest of the gimps from Gimpville Island they said we're back with a bang. We are back with a bang. Stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. Huge. I am relentless. Eddie Hearn's words I am relentless. And what happened? We know about first week, don't we? So we're not going to talk about that. What about the second week? He said 50 50 fights. His words. Not my words. Not yours. His words. 50 50 fights, Cook. 50 50s. It's going to be an amazing event with fireworks and this and that and blah de blah. What did we get? We got Pony. That's what we got. Pony. Until the main event. Which Eddie Earn needs to get on his hands and knees. He needs to thank them two girls that fought. But well, let's just back up and we'll go to the very beginning. And I'll narrate a proper story for you. A, sto a story from my script, Big P. Not Eddie Earn's Sky Matchroom script. The whole them lot are reading off. Because they're all ashamed of themselves. They get them scripts and they go, oh, I don't have to do this, do I? But they are whores. That's what they are, whores. But let me tell you, I'm going to put my banter and my narrative on it. So let's go. Here we go. Chris Billum Smith against that Thorley geezer. Thorley and him, they fought at Cruiserweight for Commonwealth title. So you're with me so far on this story. It's all about stories. It's getting like wrestling. So we've got a cruiserweight champion, 200 pound, against a guy who doesn't have a belt, 175 pounds, stepping up. How's he getting a title fight? How's he getting a title fight at 200 pound? How? How's he doing that? Who is signing off Foley to fight at 200 pound? For a title, is it Simon Block at the Commonwealth? Because somebody's signed off, haven't they, on it? Somebody's signed off for, and then allowed it to happen. And what happened? Don't forget safety is paramount. What happened? He got put to sleep in the second round, did he? Could it be because he was a small man fighting a big man? I could be shouting that we need a weight division between light heavyweight and cruiserweight. Like a super light heavyweight, uh, 182, or we could have a light cruiserweight at 195 or 194 to bridge the gap. And you've, then you've, you've just seen it there. If that would have been a death at the weekend, everybody would have been screaming for there to be a couple of weight divisions between light heavyweight and cruiserweight but it is what it isn't isn't it so we've got Thorley smoked smoked his boots were on fire round two moving on then to Opie Price against Johnny Phillips now I don't want it to be about the trainers all the time but we get these trainers like Coldwell and Gallagher and people like that Sky seem to base it around them because these people, Gallagher does a bit of promoting now doesn't he 
Colwell's been the promoter, although he failed. These people, right, they know the game inside out, so they tend to give them loads of air time and that because they're good for TV and they can sell the fighter. Now, I don't believe a word Dave Colwell says. Dave, I know you're watching. I don't like you. You know that, don't you? And you know why. You're a wrong one. But the point I want to make is he's a good trainer, right? So we can't take that away from him. He knows his onions, but it is what it isn't. But getting back to Opie Price, jury's out on whether jury's out on him. He's had two fights, but yet Caldwell's giving him big licks like he's some ex Olympic gold medalist. If he were that good, he'd still be with amateurs, wouldn't he, picking up medals? But he ain't, is he? So the jury's out on whether the jury's out on Opie Price. He's had a few rounds, two fights. All of a sudden, it's best thing, best thing since sliced bread. Opie Price should be getting guys out of there like Johnny Phillips. He should be smoking his boots. Billum Smith didn't mess about. He's get, he was getting married the day after. He got in there, did the job and got out. Opie Price were too busy, in my opinion, trying to practice his art and have a play around. Maybe he needed the rounds, I don't know. But he got a win and he looks a good prospect. But I don't want to hear all these pundits and commentators saying... What he's doing there is experienced and he's got an old head on young shoulders and he's world class and blah de blah. People are getting carried away after two fights. We heard all this with Fowler and Jordan Gill, didn't we? What happened? They got beat on Caldwell's watch, didn't they? But we heard all this classy operator, didn't we? And this and that. And then we get Johnny Phillips in there, we hope you price, and we've got Mr. Bean there, haven't we? Rough, tough, rugged, durable, all out. We all heard it, didn't we? He's added all action to his rough, tough, rugged, durable. It's now rough, tough, rugged, all action, durable. Look, it's a load of rubbish, isn't it? Let's judge Opie Price when he's had 15 fights, right? Or 10 fights, right? Let's judge him when he's had 10 fights. We can't be judging him after two fights and saying, you know, he, 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 he's going to be the new pickled gherkin. Because he isn't, is he? Do you know what I mean? We don't know. The kid might be talented. He looks like he's got silky skills. But I don't want to hear all this about he's the next big thing and all that. It's a load of old pony. After two fights. Like I said, we heard it with Jordan Gill. We heard it with Fowler. I mean, and, and So, but well done, Opie Price. But I want to judge you after ten fights, not three fights. But well, you got the win, Jordan Gill got the win the week before, brilliant! But who else has Caldwell got? Who else? Uh, Bellew has gone, Chisora, he's not there, David Price has gone. I don't know. Uh, I think the best thing he's done in his career is Ryan Rhodes. I think the best thing he did in his career was Ryan Rhodes because everybody knows I'm a, Ryan, a massive Ryan Rhodes fan. He, he could have been pound for pound at like middleweight, but it is what it isn't. But we wish Opie all the best. Right then, uh, moving on. Anthony Fowler against Adam Harper. Hmm. What can I say about this fight? Like, this fight had me raging for a simple reason. We've got people like the British Board of Control, and we know what they are, don't we? We all know what they are. They're going on about safety is paramount, and we're the best in the business, and this and that. And then they put a kid in with Anthony Fowler. Now, the matchmakers should be ashamed. Both the trainers should be ashamed. Shane McGuigan, you should be ashamed of yourself. Right? The trainer for Adam Harper should be ashamed. Eddie Earn should be ashamed. Sky Sports should be ashamed. And British Boxing Board of Control need to hang their head in shame. How did this fight get passed? How did this fight get passed for Anthony Fowler? First of all, Fowler's a champion, in it. He's got a minor belt, right? Is it WBA International? I'm not sure on that. You'd have to double check. He's got a WBA International belt, I believe, but the belt went on the line. Oh, well, no wonder. It shouldn't have been. Adam, Adam Harper shouldn't have been in the same county as Anthony Fowler. It's chalk and cheese. Now, Fowler, Will Bronze... Medalist, same as Carl Froch, same format as Olympics, isn't it? Ex Olympian, didn't win a medal. So he's World Amateur Bronze, ex Olympian, Team GB for years and years, right? Then you've got who he's been in with, who he's sparred, 
and this this kid's had the best of the best up there at the EIS. He's had the best of the best. He's super fit. He can work. He's a good fighter. He's annoying outside of the ring and on social media. But nobody can deny the fact that Anthony Fowler's a good fighter. What is he ranked? 29, 30 in world? I don't know. You you might get some on on this footage. We might stick some box rips up, up stuff about it. But point I want to make is this guy here has been out at ring two years. Anthony Fowler, right? For fighting a guy. Two year out of the ring, Adam, Adam Harper. Two year out of the ring. With brain scan issues right just look just look at the screen now look at the screen and read it now i know people that know people in his camp right and they even knew we were going to get beat so how can that be fair going back to eddie earn's words 50 50 fights cool we're not messing about we're coming back with a big bang yeah the only bangs you were coming back with were on adam harper's head getting smashed around ring by Fowler total disgrace and I could see people right at that show on TV they were like oh and I know people right that were there I've got emails I've had, te had texts coming through my phone this should have been stopped in the middle of the fourth round but they didn't did they let it go on and on and on the referee were disgraceful total dis the referee were a joke right Total joke, and everybody involved in that fight should hang their heads in shame because if we would have had a death on our hands, or a Michael Watson job, basically half a death, or a Gerald McClellan job, if it would have been a catastrophe or a disaster, who would have been to blame? What we would have seen is the British Boxing Board of Control, they'd have wheeled somebody out, you know, the usual old boys club, they'd have wheeled them all out, they'd have got, first of all, they'd have had to get them out at bar, or get the noses out the trough, or a restaurant. Wheel them out, the Board of Control would have said, he passed his medical, he passed his brain scan, what are we supposed to do? That's what would have happened, but people in the industry, know what would, was going to happen before the fight started <coughs> if it had been a full crowd there they would have the crowd would have let them know but because there's no crowd there they're getting away with murder aren't they they're getting away with murder and anthony fowler nearly got away with manslaughter didn't he because that kid shouldn't be allowed to box again i beat him myself i'd beat him myself he shouldn't be allowed to box again that was shocking not only was he ranked 333 on box rate, where did he even got that ranking from? I don't know. He was older than Fowler by two years. He'd been out of the ring two years. He weren't in shape. He was a smaller man on the night by 12 pound. I mean, come on. <laughs> what, what more do you need? His record was shocking. And he's, he's saying he had brain, brain scan issues two years ago. How is he in the same ring as Anthony Fowler, ex-Olympian, world amateur bronze, WB international champion? Oh, but the belt's not on the line, Porky. How can that be right? How, how can that be right? And these people talk about safety is paramount. Do me a favour. Shocking. Right then. So we've had three fights, basically. What first fight? We've had a light heavyweight stepping up to cruiserweight. Total mismatch, gimme fight. Shouldn't have even been signed off to fight, let alone for a Commonwealth title. Second one, Opie Price, he's a prospect coming through. You're going to expect them type opponents. He was practicing his art, won every round, so wish him well. Wish Chris Billum Smith well. Third fight, Anthony Fowler. I wish him well, but he's annoying. But that kid shouldn't have been in with him, so what have we got there? Two terrible mismatches and one that's a prospect coming through and he's allowed that fight in his third. We then move on to the fourth fight of the evening. Only four though. Back with a bang. Big extravagance. Back with a bang. If this fight doesn't come off, Eddie shows a disaster. He's going to put his head in sand. But he's had a bit of luck, hasn't he? He's even saying that people were saying to him, you're lucky on Twitter. No, no, no. Stop lying, Eddie. It's just saying that you get off your dad where you say, we had a bit of luck. Yeah, they were lucky. Very, 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 very lucky. 
Terry Harper, we all know who she's signed with, Steffi Bull. I don't like you, Steffi, you know that. If you've got a problem, get down to Mick Wales. I've been screaming for eight months. Come see me at Mick Wales Gym. Come on, let's get at it. So that, we've got that out of the way. Don't like him, but he's done a fantastic job for Terry Harper. Fantastic job, right? What he's done is got a girl to turn pro three years ago when she was 20. And basically... They've developed a style for her that's going to keep her out of trouble because she doesn't like getting hit. Comes in, gets a jab or some or lands a punch, gets on a bike. It's an horrible style to fight against. She comes flying in if she's losing around, comes in square on, and that Jonas girl were picking her off all the time. But they developed a style where they might be able to pinch a belt and earn a few quid and sell a few tickets. She's not only pinched a belt, she's pinched an IBO and a WBC title, but she's fought women, we're not, we're losing records, and old women, old women! And they thought they'd got another old woman, well that girl she beat for the title, was she 40 year old? Well, Jonas is in her 37th year, Terry Harper's 23, so we all had Terry to beat her on points. I had Terry Harper to win on points, but Natasha Jonas won the fight by three rounds. Take the bias out. From me, you could say two rounds. What judge gave that by two rounds to Harper? Ian John Lewis. Ian John Lewis is the, is a disaster. He is the Albert Trotter of boxing. He is Frank Spencer of boxing. The guy's a joke. He's done that many calamity decisions as a ref and judge. He shouldn't be allowed a boxing license. Ian John Lewis. I'll tell you to your face when I see you mate, you shouldn't be allowed near a boxing ring. But getting back to the actual fight, you've got, she got, head butted in the second round, he never had that as an head clash. That was a head clash in the second round. Round seven, maybe you could say that were a 10-8 round, I don't know. She got flogged in round, no, round 10 it was, no, round, sorry, round 8, she got flogged in round 8, Harper, but she came back strong, so you have to give Terry Harper credit, but no man on this earth who watches boxing can give Terry Harper 6 rounds out of 10. Impossible, wouldn't happen, never happened, there were too many close rounds earlier on. The rounds that Jonas won, she won them clearly, very, very clearly. And now, what we're going to see now is, we're going to see a rematch. Well, it's got to be a rematch, aren't there now? But we've already heard Steffi Ball's excuses. Oh, it was about weight, she couldn't make weight and this and that. Weight? What about the check weight? She passed every check weight leading up to the fight, Steffi. Every check weight. So, don't be coming out with, oh, she, she had a problem with weight. You hit every check weight, you, you hit it. So, she's been training six months. She won a pound underweight on the day of the weigh-in. Now that to me is somebody that's overtrained. Personally, I think she needs a new trainer. I don't think she's going anywhere with Steffi Bull. That style that she's got is what everybody in that gym's got. Well, it's true, isn't it? 90% of them in that gym have got that style. Now that style only take you so far. The first time she fought anybody any good, she got beat up, bashed up. At the end of the fight, she knew she'd been bashed up. They all sat with their arms on ropes and that. The other girl were cheering, they lifted her up. She was robbed of a decision on the night, but it was a fantastic fight and she's got a lot of, I wouldn't say balls then, but she's got a lot of credit for t taking the punishment that she did. But she didn't win that fight. Everybody in the industry knows they had a touch and I want to see, I want to see her do well, but let's have a rematch and let's have it done correctly with proper judges. Not Ian John Lewis. Proper judges and a proper ref. All right, that's what it needs. Joe Gallagher has called it correct. He says, we need a knockout to win this. We're not going to get a decision on a match room show where they've invested all that money in Terry Harper. And that's bottom line, isn't it? If you want to win on a match room show now, you've got to knock people out. Otherwise, you're not getting a decision. And we're back to slave trader days now. The promoters are in charge, let me tell you. The promoters are in charge. Not the the fighters, the promoters are in charge, alright? So that's just my opinion anyway, but I wish him well. I thought the show as a whole were 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. But the last fight were a 10 out of 10 and both girls deserve credit. And both teams deserve credit as well. 
Well done, Teddy. Great, last, great, last. Good shot, Tasha. I thought that were really funny from Joe and Steffi, but at the end of the day, it is what it is, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? But two minute rounds is no good. Not when you're fighting somebody that comes forward and then he's Terry Harper like faints, goes forward and backward and then goes in reverse and stays hard at way after she's landed a shot. That And two minute round isn't long enough, but it is what it is, isn't it? So peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. Don't have nightmares.